Okay, Aaron, so I was driving, um, and it's a bit dangerous texting and when you're driving, right? And it's against the law, so I don't want to do it. So, okay, so I pulled over, and I just happened to have Zach Johnson's numbers with me. Um, I kind of interested in guys that are, are really good performers on the tour that are uh, slower swing speeds simply because um, the people that you coach, and I'm not sure how much coaching you or Brand will do, are from 80 miles an hour to about 95 that are, are on male golfers that are trying to play this game for a hobby. You know, occasionally you get some guys that swing over 100 miles an hour, 105, but the majority are that. So you know, and the number one question is always, you know, I'd like to hit it further. How do I do it? Well, in a lot of cases, these people are too, too old or they don't have the um, ability to be able to go into the gym and do some serious training to uh, increase their club head speed. So what you do is you try and make some adjustments to their swing to help them, and then you start talking to them about the impact alignments and how important this is. So let's take Zach Johnson because that's what we're kind of chatting about now. Now the reason why I said he, he hit up for 25 years is I just don't see a guy going to hit down or, uh, on the driver before he gets on tour and then suddenly start hitting up. Now 25 years might be too long, that's a guess. I mean that's uh, for sure, I don't know that. But when I first met Zach, he was even a qualifier. Uh, he was a qualifier on the... Uh, web.com tour, I'm not sure what it was called at the time, it might have been Nike tour or whatever it was called, right? He wasn't even on the tour. He qualified and he, he played in a tournament and I watched him because he qualified and shot 65, 64 the first two days and I'm like, wow, I gotta watch this guy. Went to the driving range and watched him hit. Um, and he hit high draws. So I'm assuming that was way back before he was on tour, so I'm not sure how long he's been on tour, but it's been a while. Um, he was hitting high draws, and it's kind of, he didn't hit it far, but he hit it far enough. Um, so I'm assuming that for as long as he's tried to play professional golf, or he's tried to hit, uh, or he has hit up, at least up a little bit. Now, how do I know this, or why do I know this? I don't know it, but I'm making some assumptions based on the reality of where he is and how he plays the game. So I went on to PJ Tour and went to the radar stats. And the radar stats for this year, right? And so it's a snapshot in time, fair enough. But we would say that over the course of time, you know, his, he's not going to change that much. It's going to be fairly similar. And each shot and each drive is mutually exclusive based on the shot you're hitting, fair enough. But we would say that it forms a picture over time of what this guy does that we can say this is an average and this is kind of what he does, right? It's his. His thumbprint, if you would say, I'd like to say. Okay, so he launches the ball 14.28. So he's one of the highest launching drivers on the PGA Tour. And he, every time I play with him, he's hit at high draw. And he hits almost a draw exclusively. So he has some nice alignments that allow him to do that. Okay, but anyway, so he launches the ball at 14. Now, he spin rate is 2,044. Very, it's a low spin. Jason Day's at 1,800, he's at 2,000, some guys are up close to 3,000. But for a guy that doesn't have a lot of club head speed, because his club head speed's 106.75, and his ball speed is 157. Now, we would say that his ball speed, yeah, he could miss hit some of these for sure. Oh, I, I'm not saying that these are all perfect. It's probably around 160. We would say that's pretty, pretty good. And he has to compete against Rory McIlroy, Jason Day, Dustin Johnson, and we know that there is a lot of variables in this game outside of how far you drive the ball or how high you hit it or any of that. Now, I'm perfectly aware of that because as a former player, I certainly know the importance of things other than hitting the golf ball. Um, so, But let's make some assumptions here. So let's say his angle of attack is zero. We have to get him to launch this ball up in the air 14, well, it's 14.28, but let's say for make, keep the math simple, 14. So he's launching this ball up in this air at 14 degrees. So how does he do that? So let's say his angle of attack is zero. So we're going to do this concept called spin loft. Now spin loft is, here is the, the face angle pointed up, up in the air, right? It can be pointed straight, it can be pointed up in the air, or it could be negative, which you can't really do. But let's just say... In his case, he's going up at 14 degrees. 
Now that's the top vector of the spin loft. Now he, the bottom vector okay, is going to be his the movement of the club. It can be moving level, it can be moving down, or it can be moving up with a driver. Everything else that's on the ground, you're going to be hitting down for sure because you've got to present the sweet spot to the ball. So if he's aiming, actually going level, but launching the ball at 14 degrees, his club dynamic loft has to be above 14 because the ball always launches within the D-plane, within that top vector. So let's say now it's got to be more than 14 degrees. So what is that number? If he's at zero, we know he's not getting any launch at his, on his angle of attack. He's not getting any launch from that higher launch. He's getting, say, neutral. So that means that if you take the 14 degrees and you divide that by 0.8 using an 80-20 model, which is a reasonable assumption on vertical launch, we would say that his club head dynamic loft would have to be 17.5, because 14 divided by 0.8 is 17.5. Well, now you've got a differential between this is pointing up 17.5, and his swing is going level. That's the differential of 17.5. You can't possibly spin the ball at 2044. That's, that's an impossibility. It's like the Titanic. When it had a breach in its hull, it was mathematical certainty that that was going to sink not because it was badly built, it just it was breached in such a way that they were, all of those were going to fill up those, and then it was going to just sink. There's no way to stop it. So in this case, there's no way that you can produce 2044 spin, play a, uh, effective goal with a 17.5 spin loft. So what do you do? You've got two options. You can bring, try and bring the loft down, but we, he's not doing that because he's launching at 14. So the only variable you've got left is where is this angle of attack going? So the more that you go down, right, see this number gets bigger. So he has to bring this up towards the loft in order to be able to control that, control that spin loft and spin it at 2044. Now, remember, the golf ball is designed to spin, let's say the number is 2300, something like that, 2200, something designed like that. But it's not designed to get performance out of a large spin. Now he's only got 106 mile an hour club at speed and a ball speed of 160. If he spins it more and more and more, he's going to lose distance. And not only that, he's going to curve it more. More spin equals more curve because there's more friction working on the ball. If you, if you, to understand that um, at a um, intuitive level, get a flyer out of the rough and try and curve it. Can't do it. That, that flyer is the least amount of loft possible. Right? Goes straight. Goes far and straight. So he has to have the least amount of uh, spin because he cannot push the ball through the air and stay in the air long enough before it falls out of the ground, falls to the ground to get a lot of distance. So he has to have a, the least amount of spin to, to be able to get the performance out of the ball, but he has to launch it high because there's not enough spin to keep it through going through the air. So he must launch it high and spin the least. So what does he do? He knows he has to launch it high, so we know we have to have that, that dynamic loft up, but now you've got to bring the bottom vector, which is your angle of attack, closer to that in order to be able to launch the ball in the air because you've got to get some launch out of the angle of attack launch out of the the dynamic law but keep the spin such that it doesn't spin a lot but also the ball stays in the air with a certain amount of spin it's designed for that so a shorter hitter must hit the ball in the air and then they must keep the spin rate down as best they can in order to get performance out of their driver now it's not the all to end all for sure on how to play golf i mean, no one's arguing that but in, in order to suggest that a short hitter like Brian Gay, Zach Johnson, um, Alex Checker hit down on their driver is ludicrous. And so what you would say is that the shorter hitters, the shorter hitters actually tend to hit up. And they don't lose control. David Toms is another example. He's four degrees up, something like that. These are good drivers of the ball. Now, Jason Day, who 
who's swinging at a 106, 16, 17 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour, whatever he's swinging at, and he's producing a ball speed of 175, that's 15 miles an hour faster ball speed. And let's say we equate that to two and a half yards per mile an hour of ball speed, he's, he's already got a 40 yard or whatever it is number advantage on, on Zach Johnson. Now, Zach cannot give up another yard, just can't do it. I don't care how good he putts because Jason Day just set, set the record historically of putting last year on the PGA Tour. So he putts just as good. He, so Zach Johnson, in order to compete, needs to maximize his driver and to be very good at what he's very good at, which is his wedge game, his putting, and an exceptional mental game. Great player. But see, so what, what is he actually doing? Let's kind of figure it out. So let's we assume, let's say he's launching this at 14.8 or 14 degrees. We'll assume a 16 degree dynamic loft up in the air. Okay. Now, if he's hitting up four degrees, four degrees. So you got 16 degrees hitting up. Is it 0.8 or 80 percent of the launch angle comes from that? So we would say that's 12.8, something like that. And if we said if he's hitting up four degrees, so instead of hitting level, he's now hitting up. That's going to be at 0.2, so 4 times 0.2 gives us 0.8. So you add the point, that 0.8 to the 12.8 from the loft, that gives us right at 13.6, close enough to 14, something like that. So he's probably hitting up a little more. So he's somewhere between 4 and 5 degrees up. Not because necessarily he, that's the, he thinks that's the best way to do it because he's going to hit it straighter, but out of necessity to do that in order to perform, and he learned to hit the ball straight doing it. So that's my take on it. However, I, I could be wrong.